Hello, welcome back. Here's a collection of footage from a whole bunch of the wood cutting and I guess in this case also just marking and cutting the uh, arrow panel uh, that I did. So, yeah, this was this was kind of a pain to edit down. It's going to be a little bit choppy. Um, maybe I show too much of some parts, maybe not enough of others. Uh, still figuring out how to do this format of video. It's It's kind of a challenge. Um, so what I'm doing right here is I'm marking out the corners on one of the arrow panels, uh, that are to be cut off to get that sort of semi-octagonal -octag shape. Um, so I'm measuring 49.49 millimeters from each edge, which just happened to be, um, the right amount to get a 7 millimeter long flat surface, uh, for the diagonal. So I make a mark at each one of those points, then once I have all those, um, I just use the ruler as a straight edge and put lines in, um, in on the diagonals. So those are going to be cut with a miter saw later, um, which gets an exact 45 degree angle. So it's not super important that I get these marks here, but it's very useful for, uh, for reference and aligning the saw blade and everything. Uh, this arrow panel that I'm marking right here is, I think, the... Let's see, I got eight of them and cut all of them uh, and thought I was going to use those in the arcade machine, but then the panels in my blue shark pad broke, so I had to use some of those to replace them. So this is one of the additional four that I ordered, so that I would have eight for the new pad and uh, up to four to replace in the blue shark in case, in case all four of those panels break. A second one broke since I did that, so <laughs> I'm glad I was prepared with that. Um, this is uh, polycar a polycarbonate sheet which is stronger than whatever they used for the blue shark pad. There we go, all corners marked out. Uh, so these are much less likely to break. All right, there we go. Uh, if you hear voices in the background, uh, that's my nephew who is interested in the corners that I'm cutting off of this. Um, he wanted them to, to build some sort of airplane thing out of them. <laughs> uh, so as I cut these off, I'm passing them on to him. It might look like my thumb is scarily close to the blade there, but it, I actually have a good bit of di nah, good bit of distance on it. There's, one. <laughs> There's a corner for him. So this thing, when it's cutting this material, has a tendency to sort of kick it out to the left. Um, I'm trying to position my hand to prevent that from happening as much as I can. You can see that sort of jerk right at the end. Um, it doesn't cut cleanly all the way through all the time. Fortunately, that's easy enough to fix. I just flip it over, put it in the other way, and then make another cut to clean it up. And that one goes really quick and smooth every time. And that corner's all cleaned up. So that stack you can see on the left is uh, all of the panels that I was cutting that day. Here's another angle. So I'm trying to line up the blade so that the width of it is on the outside edge. Because I don't want to cut inside the line. I want to cut outside the line so that I keep all the material that's on the other side of it. I think I'm trying to show... yeah, there's a little extra corner on there. It didn't come through in the video very well and I tried to do it too quickly. Um, all those little shavings of plastic just kind of get everywhere. I found them all over my hair and clothes and everything afterward. <laughs> There's no avoiding it. And then that's cut nice and clean. So we did uh, we did some test cutting on one of the broken uh, acrylic sheets from the Blue Shark and it had a problem with melting with all sorts of different tools that we tried. The miter saw worked kind of okay. We tried a band saw and I think something else, and they all had melting problems, but this material does not at all. It just cuts nice and clean. And there we go, that's a panel. So now here, um, man, 
This stuff is noisy. <laughs> Even on video after the fact. So I'm using a circular saw here to cut across a um, four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood. This, uh, you saw the saw come up a little bit. I wasn't holding it down enough in the back, but fortunately that didn't cause me any problems. So this sheet of plywood becomes the two base plates and I think all of the stationary panels actually. So 10, um, just under 11 inch squares come out of this, and then the big base plates that are 41 inches by 35, I forget the exact measurement. Uh, so that was the long cut. Here we're making some shorter ones to actually make the base plate shape. This one was a little tricky because I couldn't see exactly what I was doing right at the end. You kind of end up having to just guess and push forward and hope you're straight. Because, <laughs> like, up until a certain point, I can see there's a reference point on the front of the saw so that I know where to cut. But past here, there's nothing underneath it, so just have to go forward until I get to the end. little bit of a mess right in the corner. Uh, I think that might be one of the corners we cut out. I didn't actually get footage of cutting the, the corner diagonally. Um, we just used the circular saw for that because it didn't really fit on the miter saw platform. So another cut to make the other base uh, platform. And then that stuff in the middle becomes some of the stationary panels. I'm going kind of slow because I want to cut straight, because this stuff is important to get straight. I enjoyed the circular saw. It felt safe and easy to use and did its job really well. Um, miter saw was pretty okay, the table saw is the scary one. That's a table saw. I think this is my first time using it. Um, I make a couple of mistakes. Let's see, what exactly happens in this cut? I don't remember. Oh, right. I don't have it... <laughs> He's trying to tell me that I don't have it against the fence very well. So it's kind of... Yeah, that's that's not all the way flush with it. So... Yep. Um, so I decided to redo that. Basically, I lost the first little bit of that. So that's going to become scrap. Um... So I'm more careful about holding it to my right while I'm doing this, so that it's flush against the fence the whole time. Power tools are complicated sometimes. It helps to have two people. That makes it a lot easier, with large pieces like this at least. Gotta hold it down and to the right, and feed it through at a reasonable rate, and also keep your fingers out of the blade. That's the most important part. <laughs> Fortunately, I haven't managed to lose any yet. So the fence for this is set at 10.65 inches, which is the exact uh, square size of the stationary panels. So we're cutting this long piece uh, to the appropriate width, then we'll cut it the other way um, to get an exact square. And if that's all done at the same time without moving the, uh, moving the fence at all, then they all get the exact correct dimensions, and it's consistent. So table saw is a great tool, just a little bit unwieldy and scary sometimes. This one doesn't have a guard on it. I, um, apparently there's, there's something that makes it a little safer. So a couple of things go wrong here. Notice my left hand slips a little bit, then I realize I need to use my thumb to keep it in place. Fortunately, it doesn't get too close to the blade, but that was slightly scary. Then here I do something dumb. <laughs> For whatever reason, I let go of that piece, and then the blade flings it into me. Didn't really hurt at all, just like, whoops. <laughs> just gotta be more careful with that. So he's explaining what I need to do to make that not happen. It can either turn off the blade and keep it in place, or pull it back, or push it forward all the way through. I think this one I pulled back.
Yeah. And that works just fine. It pulls back really easy because that's the way the blade wants to push it. As I demonstrated earlier, so once I got down to the end there and there wasn't enough to safely hold on the left side, um, an additional tool was needed. So just a simple little piece of scrap wood with a notch in it is a very handy tool for this, for pushing stuff through safely without getting hands too close to the saw. And there we go. So that another piece just gets cut a whole bunch of times the same way. I think I have one more of the same, yep, same dimension. That piece that I'm cutting now is marked with an X, that's the one that was messed up uh, when I didn't have it in the appropriate place, so I just drop it off the edge there. That one became scrap. And there we go. There's the ten stationary panels. All done. So now, um, one of the cuts we made through the base plate was uh, slightly wide, so we decided to clean it up like this. For whatever reason, we determined the best way was to climb on top. <laughs> um, this thing was up on some sawhorses, also propped on some 2 by 3s just to give it, just so we weren't cutting the sawhorses as we went by with the blade. Um, hair, stay out of the way. <laughs> Uh. I didn't understand what was happening with the trigger for the saw there. Something, I didn't have a good grip on it or something, but I got it worked out. There we go, that piece is cut down to the appropriate size. So all the 2x3s that make up the frame for the pad um, were best cut at a miter saw. Um, that seemed like the simplest option because they were all of varying sizes. Um, this can just make a reasonably easy straight cut and stuff. So all the marking um, of dimensions was probably like well over half of the workshop time. Actually making cuts was not the most of it. <laughs> um, so yeah, measuring and marking is a pretty time consuming process in itself. So I'm measuring out the next cut to make here, I think, or yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Because once I make, I, I didn't want to measure multiple ones because uh, I would have to take into account the width of the saw blade. It was easier to just measure one, make a cut, and then if I'm cutting that same piece of wood from that same point, uh, just measure another one from there. For some reason I decided to use this enormous unwieldy square to make a straight line across the 2x3 there. <laughs> I guess I didn't have a smaller one with me at the time. But it did the job. Really, I could have gotten away with just the one mark, um, but having one all the way across makes it just a little bit easier to line up the blade. I do some stuff later with just a, a simple one ruler mark that doesn't go all the way across. Need to remember carefully which side of the wood I'm cutting, like whether I want to keep the left or the right. That determines which side I align the blade on. I think I'm keeping the left side of this one. Or maybe both sides. I'll, I'm probably cutting that, that piece of wood I just took down further for something else. Yeah, so I think those two cuts I made are the longest sections of 2x3. They're the vertical part of the frame that runs up the inside on both sides of the pad. 
Um, so for each piece here, I marked the name of the piece and the length of it, just so I wouldn't confuse any of them. And that, that's, that was a really good idea because it's very easy to confuse those if I don't, if I don't mark them in some way. So I'm back at home here. Um, unfortunately, I didn't capture the footage of making these initial cuts into these. These pieces need an extra notch out of the edge of them. So we used the table saw to make the initial cuts there that I'm starting with, but then a handsaw was necessary to finish them up just because this table saw blade is circular and doesn't go straight through. But with the pre-sawing with the table saw, it wasn't too bad to finish with a handsaw. I hate handsawing. It's such a pain. <laughs> saw blade always buckles on me and or seizes up or something. I guess I'm not very good at it. I googled around for techniques for doing it better and didn't find much. Um, one thing I did find was that I might be using the wrong kind of saw blade for cutting there. That I need a rip saw for that. So that might be a cross cut. But when I was in the hardware store, I couldn't find the appropriate saw blade for that. Maybe they're using different terminology. Uh, but it gets the job done eventually. So that's one. Then I have another one here where the table saw went a little farther through. You could see the, the line actually went all the way to the, the other cut there. So this one goes a lot quicker. There's that bending out that I was talking about. I don't have a very good thing to put it on, just this little bar stool was the best thing I had around. It did the job. A little wobbly, but it did the job. So right, the reason that's cut out is because the the bar bracket uh, goes on top of it like that. Not exactly like that, but that's that's the general idea. So those pieces are done. So another day, back at the workshop. Um... Right now, I'm cutting the uh, pieces for the back cover of the pad. If you remember from the schematic, uh, these are the pieces that would go around the bar. I'm by myself this time, but I have that little roller thing on the left to assist with this large piece. Once it gets far enough out, that'll sort of catch it and keep it from just falling on the floor. Not strictly necessary, but convenient to have since it's there. The weight of the um, the plywood just holds it down for the most part, so I just needed to concern myself with keeping it against the fence and keeping my thumbs out of the way and sort of carefully up against the fence as I do this. There's that piece. So I'm glad I knew somebody with these tools. They would have been a pretty serious investment if I needed to buy them. And more of a problem than that would be the, the space for them, because I just do not have space for this sort of thing in my house. These take up a huge amount of room. Let's see, what am I doing here? Right, so this is... Um I'm making a cut in a big sheet of plywood mostly just for convenience because I needed to make some more precise cuts in that, but I didn't need the whole thing, so I just sort of marked out a section and decided to slice it off with a little bit of buffer for um, for stuff I didn't need. But yeah, everything that's everything that I'm not kneeling on right now, I think just basically gets discarded and becomes scrap. Now I'm glad I had some extra because I did discover a couple of problems that are going to make me redo some of these pieces. <laughs> I'll talk about those a little more in another video, I think. But yeah, um, having extra is not a bad thing if you need to need to redo stuff. So then that piece I just cut uh, goes back in the table saw with the fence set to a different amount. 
I think the pieces I'm cutting here are the edge finish, so they're going to go sort of stood up vertically along the outside edges of the pad. Um, and they will actually be the surface that is, uh, that is all the way on the outside. So the fence is set just a little too close for comfort. I didn't want to get my thumb in there, so I decided to use a pushing stick for, um, for all the cuts here. Very useful tool. There are, um, there are products that are sold for that, um, but just making a simple cut out of a piece of scrap wood works really just as well, pretty much. This piece has a lot of nuts in it, but it doesn't matter. So I still have just enough room here to on the left to, uh, to use my hand, but then for this next cut, I actually use a second pushing stick just to, uh, just to be a little safer. My point of reference is that groove you can see um, to the left of my, well, left push stick there. I don't like my hands to go past that point. So now we're working with some thinner plywood. This stuff is used to elevate the stationary panels just that little bit. Uh, I think I went through this in the schematic last time. So basically this just gets cut in a whole bunch of strips that are mostly all the same size. It's thin stuff, so it goes pretty quick, but it's thin stuff, so the fence has to be set really close, so every cut here has to be done with a push stick. Past a certain point, at least. And since it's so thin, it's a little hard to get a grip on it sometimes. But I manage. So basically, I need, like... 12 more strips like that. These cuts didn't need to be super precise, fortunately, um, but the table saw was just the, the easiest way to deal with it. push stick doubles as a as a scoop to get it uh, get it back from the other side <laughs> So I mentioned before that I was lucky to be able to find plywood of just the right thickness to elevate the panels exactly as much as they needed to be uh, whether it's exactly as much as it needs to be remains to be seen, because I'm still still working on my test assembly of the pad. Um, I've already found a few problems with, uh, after doing that. Yeah, there comes the second push stick. Gotta be safe with that last little bit once I go past that groove. But yeah, as far as I can tell right now, those are the appropriate thickness. Alright, last cut. Little awkward to switch both hands to sticks in the middle of making that cut, but I made it work. Also, yeah, that thing tends to come off. <laughs> and that one's done. So now all those long strips get cut down to the appropriate size. I forget the exact dimensions. It's like eight and change inches. Um, miter saw was easiest. Before this happened, there was a very long marking process where I put all the lines in the uh, places where um, places where I would need to cut. 
And there are 40 of these pieces total, so that was kind of a pain. <laughs> Once I'm ready to make the cut, it goes super quick. Easy with this length, at least. Uh, I do run into a few problems with these pieces later, though. Now do this many more times. So this saw has a break in it that slows down the blade um, when you release the trigger on it. That sometimes works. It's behaving pretty well right here. And I need to wait for the blade to stop spinning in order to align it with the next cut, so it's actually kind of inconvenient when it doesn't work. That big st stack on the uh, left side of the table with this thing on it is what I'm going through. So it's at this point that the brake stops doing its job. So that forces me to wait a little bit longer before lining that up. It stopped pretty much in time there though, so it didn't waste too much time. Got like three more to go. I wonder if it would have worked at all to try stacking these. Like cut through four or so at a time. I didn't try it at the time, uh, I guess just because I didn't want to waste the materials if it didn't work, but thinking about it now, that probably would be fine in this particular situation. Wouldn't really save that much time though, since this is the quick part, marking them as the slow part. Yeah, so that whole stack is what I just cut. That's not all that I need, but it's, <laughs> it's a good amount of them at least. So now I'm taking some of the smaller, the, like, other sides that were not the exact right dimensions, and I'm trying to cut them here. You can see a whole bunch of splinters just sort of flew out there. Um, I try another one, just in case that was a fluke. Because I'm just cutting off, like, half an inch off the end of each one of these. So trying to hold it down with my left hand pretty well, but even so... Even so, it kind of kicks out and just does not do exactly what I want it to do. So I try to show up close what happened to the wood. It's not, definitely not a clean cut. So that doesn't work. Alright, so switching over to the back cover corners here. Um, those need diagonal cuts uh, along the edges. And this is just the tool for the job. Get it lined up real good. Sometimes that's the slowest part. So the blade isn't quite big enough to go all the way through that corner, but enough to break it off. And then just like with the arrow panel, I can flip it over and just finish it on that side. There was not a lot to grip against the back wall of the, the tool there, um, but it was enough. So I think the problem with those other things that I was trying to cut um, with just the little cuts at the end of them is basically that they didn't go all the way across to both sides of the fence there. These just barely can um, when they're at full width. But yeah, like without being able to do that, it just does not, does not behave the right way. It goes almost through, but not quite. 
Those are pieces that I'm unfortunately going to have to redo. <laughs> so I did not cut them to the right dimensions. I cut them to the dimensions I planned, but the thing, my, my plan had a flaw in it. <laughs> yeah. But I'll talk about them more later. So here, this is one of the pieces of edge finish, I think. Um, I see that it's marked. I can't read it from here, though. <laughs> um, yeah, I think these are the, the edges. So pretty straightforward, just mark and cut. Now, let's see. Those two pieces that I just cut get additionally trimmed down in the corner. Similarly, well, actually there's nothing else quite like this. <laughs> so that needs to be cut vertically like that. Uh, again, since I, don't ha I can't put it all the way across and touch both fences with it, I just use a clamp there. The clamp is nice because it lets me just sort of lean back and just use one hand to bring the thing down. Once again, the blade's not big enough to make the cut all the way through. So I sort of had to think about it a little bit and figure out what I wanted to do, but I can do the same thing as I did uh, on the other side. That does involve um, turning it around to the other 45 degree angle, so I decide to make all the cuts that I can at this angle, then turn it around and make the other four. So that's half of one piece. Let's do half of the other piece. I wanted to reach in there and mess with it, but I decided I should wait for the blade to stop mess uh, stop spinning first. <laughs> All right, so at this point, we can flip it around just like that and make the cut on the other diagonal. So much sawdust. <laughs> yeah, this is a messy place. Just the nature of workshops. Clamp it to the other one and basically do the exact same thing. Now, aligning it was a little bit challenging because I was aligning with the groove that I'd cut in the other side of it so that it would hopefully cut along the same one. It worked out just fine. Makes those neat little triangular cutouts. <laughs> That's one done. For some reason, you can see a spark that happens inside the machine when, when it turns off. I'm not sure what that's about exactly. If you watch the, the sort of vent-looking thing. A little hard to see with the sped-up footage. All right, all finished. Those turned out pretty great. So once again, back at home, um, for all these little pieces that I wanted to cut with the miter saw that didn't work so well, I decided to just hand saw to finish them. I only needed like nine or ten or so of those. Um, so it's still a pain. I still don't have any better sawing surface because the table that would be my work table is completely full of all the parts that are going into this project. I guess what I should have done is relocate them, but I haven't done that. <laughs> so a little bar stool does the job reasonably okay. I'm trying to get my hand into a good place there where I can hold the piece down but not be particularly in danger of hitting it with the saw blade. Now that I know what I'm doing, the second one goes a little bit better. Oh, 
All that that's happening right now is why I hate head sawing. It's such a pain. And I don't think there's anything wrong with my saw. It's just... I'm just not very good at it, or maybe that's just, just the way that it always is. So a bunch more of those. And we'll have all the panel risers done. The round shape on top of that is super awkward for this. It would be a lot better to have a right angle for it. <laughs> A little bit of splintering there doesn't matter because these are not exposed pieces. They are basically just just to elevate some other pieces that will be. And those are done. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Um, so that was most of the woodworking footage that I have. Um, and yeah, next time I have a bunch of metalworking and some drilling and stuff. So yeah. I'll show that off then. I'll see you then.